really the the mouth is the perfect mirror and reflector of somebody's internal health i'm i'm peering inside of this this unique window oftentimes without getting any type of microbiome testing i can tell if people have microbiome imbalances i can tell if people have micronutrient deficiencies based off of the uh, the texture of their tongue traditional chinese medicine has actually uh, utilized these types of practices Hi, everybody. I'm Joel Salatin with my favorite co-host, Dr. Sina McCullough. Welcome Your only to another... co-host. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That's, that's like a guy, that's like a guy got one daughter. I always told Rachel, I said, you're my favorite daughter. Welcome to another podcast of Beyond Labels. We have a real treat today, and it's personally a joy for me to uh, introduce you to my uh, functional dentist. What in the world is functional dentistry? And and so we're going to explore that a little bit. Dr. Jesse Myers is a young up-and-coming dentist in our area here in, in uh, Stanton, Virginia. Sorry for those of you who don't live here. You can't, uh, you know, it's a little bit difficult maybe to, to get to him. But we want to explore this world of functional dentistry. And let me just tell you a little story here. The last time I was in, I went in there and he takes a little light and he shines it in my mouth on my tongue, and he says, wow, your microbiome is really good. Now, all of you listening to this, you know that I drink out of the stock tank uh, as part of my, you know, keeping my microbiome uh, completely healthy and diversified. And so, uh, so, it was, so, yeah, this intrigued me. You know, you can, you, can, you can look at the light on my tongue with this special device and tell me if my microbiome is healthy. That's pretty cool. So those and other things are the kind of world that this – uh, young, enjoyable uh, dentist lives in. And so, uh, Dr. Jesse Myers, uh, welcome to the Beyond Labels podcast, and thank you for being with us. Uh, thank you, guys. I am really excited to share conversation with you all. Um, and uh, just a, a little um, kind of bringing it home for me is uh, I actually uh, stepped onto Joel's farm when I was in middle school. Uh, I was going through uh, kind of a challenging time in the public school system and ended up uh, being homeschooled by my mom. She recognized that I needed a little bit more attention during that time of growth and development for me. And uh, and then uh, kind of through the homeschooling community here in Stanton, um, Joel, you had brought on the homeschooling co-op at the time to uh, kind of have uh, like meals and learn about regenerative farming and it it just changed my my mom's worldview and since that time my mom has been chattering in my ear everything about uh, like permaculture uh -huh. regenerative farming and it's uh, really kind of fostered how i think as a doctor and uh and really during that time frame um my my intellect was uh really set behind i didn't have very good uh reading skills at the time i was like three uh, grades behind my, my current class when I was in public school. And so that period of time was really crucial for, for my development and, uh, and for critical thinking. And, so, and did, you, did you eventually catch up? Uh, yeah, ab absolutely. And uh, it's uh, <laughs> at, at this point, I am such a nerd. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, that's, that's literature. Yeah, that's great. Uh, it's a great story. So, so um, um, introduce us a little bit to to functional dentistry. Uh, many of our listeners will have heard of functional medicine. We've you know we've we've had functional medicine people on before. It's more eclect, uh, whatever, uh, a different field. But uh, but introduce us here to functional dentistry and maybe even your own journey. I mean. Uh, were you trained in this? Did you did you come out of the system? How did how does that how does that work? Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, let me see if I can uh, start from the perspective of functional medicine. So, functional medicine is root cause medicine, trying to uh, address symptoms, but also try to get to the cause of chronic diseases or why somebody is coming in to uh, see you as a doctor. Uh, and so for me, it's uh, functional dentistry is the application of functional medicine 
into contemporary dentistry. Um, so I tell people that I practice whole body dentistry. So I, um, the thing that I love about functional medicine is that it really is a blend of the best aspects of medicine. So we take the scientific rigor of Western medicine and take the best aspects of, uh, traditional practices like Ayurvedic medicine or, uh, traditional Chinese medicine and apply that scientific rigor, uh, to get the whole picture of, of medicine. So it, uh, for me, I just kind of recognize that, um, you know, as the, the world is continuing to go forward in the future, there's always new problems that are arising and we have to be able to adapt to the, uh, those problems. And, uh, especially in medicine, uh, we're seeing that, uh, there is just a lack of, uh, a lot of transparency that, um, Westernized medicine has practiced, but now that the scientific research is starting to catch up to a lot of holistic practices, it's really time to integrate those things that we see uh, repeatedly in the research um, to be able to practice the best type of medicine. Uh, so that's uh, that's the the way that I like to practice. Uh, so uh, it's uh, I, I term it functional dentistry. Sure. So, so you, you've made a point of telling me uh, the importance or how you see the mouth, the mouth as the, well, the, the, the entry gate to the rest of us and what you can see in the mouth. Could you, could you kind of tell from your perspective, what are some of the things you see in a mouth or you're looking for in a mouth? Yeah, it's a, it's a really unique opportunity for me to be able to intervene on somebody's life. Um, one, I see patients more than their primary care physicians a lot of times. Um, but uh, really, the the mouth is the perfect mirror and reflector of somebody's internal health. I'm I'm peering inside of this, uh, this unique window. Um, I oftentimes, without getting any type of microbiome testing, I can tell if people have microbiome imbalances um, I can tell if people have micronutrient deficiencies based off of the uh, the texture of their tongue. And uh, in uh, traditional Chinese medicine has actually uh, utilized uh, these types of practices in uh, their physicians, not not dentists. Um, so, well, I, yeah, I, I, mu I must confess that um, that that Sina and I have been uh, we're certainly friends with people that are uh, gurus in the microbiome field. Uh, even, you know, using uh, fecal samples. And I must confess that having you look in my mouth and tell me my biker biome is good or bad sure seems a lot more fun than, than, than uh, taking a fecal sample. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, well, kind of jumping off of that, something that I am really excited to be offering to my patients is, um, is microbiome testing with salivary samples. So, all of the recent research that's coming out is uh, showing how um, the microbiome of the mouth can seed inflammation in the gut and everywhere else throughout the body uh, prior to um, any type of other uh, gastrointestinal issues will occur. Um, so this, this company I'm working with uh, they have the ability to sequence all of the microbiome uh, from from saliva samples. And uh, they have a unique story where we find uh, bacteria that's in high abundance in something called gum diseases or periodontal disease, which is like red, bleeding, swollen gums. Uh, teeth can become loose and bone will get destroyed in periodontal disease. Uh, and so this one patient that had gotten this microbiome testing had a high abundance of this bacteria called Fusobacterium nucleatum. And the research is showing that Fusobacterium nucleatum is causal for gastrointestinal cancer. This person had no idea that they had gastrointestinal cancer. 
went to see their gastroenterologist after this microbiome testing and had three adenomas removed from her colon. So we can, we can truly see a lot of things uh, just from gaining access into, um, again, it's uh, somebody's internal health. Wow. Uh, Cena, you jump in here. Uh, uh, the, the, I, know, I know you've got burning questions here. Yes. Well, this topic resonates really deeply with me. I'm all about functional medicine, functional dentistry. Uh, I think that oral health is one of the most largely overlooked areas of health. So when you know you listen to podcasts, when you go to health summits and you're trying to learn how to achieve optimal health and wellness or how to reverse the disease, usually they're not talking a lot about oral health. They may touch on it a little bit, but it's often this overlooked thing. And like you said, um, in the research, there are numerous chronic and autoimmune conditions that have now been associated with imbalances in the mouth and in the tongue, like diabetes, heart disease, osteoporosis, stroke, even adverse pregnancy outcomes. You know, yeah. all of these are all associated. Um, I wondered if you can go ahead and explain for someone who's new to this, how sure. is it that those can be associated? Um, and, and I'm gonna throw in one example that I thought was a really cool one from the literature. They're talking right. about root canals and how root canals um, can actually lead to issues with the heart. So they can, there's like an autoimmune disease of the heart. And in this patient, once the root canal was removed, the symptoms improved. And, mm -hmm. and like in the root canals that have also been connected with cancers, for instance. In fact, I learned that some cancer treatment facilities won't even treat you until root canals have been removed. Like that's how significant the oral health is. So can you just, you know, speak on that? Like, why is it that the oral health can lead to these diseases? Why is it that it's so important for us to, you know, take the initiative and really be proactive in boosting our oral, our oral health? Yeah. And I'm glad that you guys are allowing me to speak about this because truly, um, whole body health, uh, really can't be attained without good dental health. And um, it, it really is the, the, the missing picture in, in health and wellness is talking about this, this topic. And uh, so you did a great job of kind of linking all of these systemic chronic diseases that have connections to the mouth. Uh, and, and one of them uh, is actually Alzheimer's disease. We, we see that uh, Alzheimer's disease is actually caused by oral bacteria that we find in high abundance in gum diseases. And all of these systemic connections really are mediated by microbiome dysbiosis in the mouth or an imbalance in the oral microbiome. Uh, so uh, kind of touching on uh, the, the, the root canal issue, uh, that, that's quite a progressive cancer uh, facility if they are suggesting that patients try to remove any sources of inflammation in the mouth. Um, so sometimes well, Cena knows all the cutting edge places. She's, <laughs> she, she's, uh, she's, she's all about the unador un unorthodox and the, and the lunatic fringe. So, uh, so, <laughs> so I, I'm not surprised that Cena knows where the lunatic fringe is. Sorry, <laughs> sorry for interrupting. I, I, I've got to keep this thing light. See, I, I'm, I'm the guy yeah. that keeps Right, okay. So. <laughs> well, you might have to get me connected uh, to some of those uh, practitioners, but um, but with root canals, a lot of times you'll um, you won't get a fully cleaned and sterilized environment inside of the tooth, and uh, fastidious bacteria that uh, survive in anaerobic conditions or conditions that have low oxygen, uh, they induce endotoxemia. Uh, due to this outer membrane that they have called lipopolysaccharide. And lipopolysaccharide, just the presence of it in the blood or lymphatic system, will elicit a hypersensitive reaction by the immune system. Uh, and so that that's how some of those links that you were discussing about are, are connected. Uh, and so if 
there is an infection with a reinfection with the root canal, that infection doesn't really have anywhere else to go. Uh, sometimes it will end up draining out through the side of uh, the gums, um, but oftentimes it can uh, just get uh, encapsulated in the abscess at the ends of the roots and um, just continually reduce, uh, it, uh, induce endotoxemia. Dr. Jesse Myers, thank you so much for being with us uh, and thank all of you for joining us on another uh, podcast of Beyond Labels. And uh, uh, Dr. Jesse, we wish you the best and we, we would like to see uh, you uh, duplicated all over the country. Uh, and and uh, it's, it's fantastic what you're doing to have you on. Thank you for uh, donating your time here to us this morning today and um, and encouraging folks to, to just think uh, more holistically and differently about their health. That's what we're about here. Uh, so thank you for joining us on the podcast, everyone. We'll look forward to seeing you next week.